What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overload here. We're going to be talking about Scream 7 in this video here today. We're going to go over some of the characters that are expected to be featured in Scream 7. Not confirmed, so I'll just say rumored characters you can expect on top of the names of Taylor and Brian that I've already revealed in the past. So Daniel RPK, who has proven himself to be reliable in the past, has come out with more characters that we can expect to see featured in the upcoming film, which we know is shifting focus back to the original final girl, Sydney Prescott, played by Nev Campbell. Courtney Cox is expected to be back, of course. You have Patrick Dempsey, who's expected to be back, and maybe someone else who I am not going to talk about. So let's talk about these names. Shout out to Kay and everyone else who sent this my way. So these are the characters who could be featured in Scream 7. These might be cold names, like I always state. So Daniel's report includes Taylor who is Sydney's daughter between the ages of 17 and 18. As I've mentioned in the past, she has been dating Brian for about a year. She has a mother named Shannon, who I believe is a code name for Sydney. And they are very protective of Taylor. And Taylor's ready to prove that she doesn't need all that. She's basically ready to be an adult and live without her parents' overprotective nature. Then you have Brian, 1718, Taylor's boyfriend. You have Chelsea, 1718, the heartbreaker of the group. Holly, 1718, Taylor's rich friend, the queen bee of the group. Logan, 1718, Taylor's hot but creepy neighbor with Ted Bundy vibes. Then you have Jennifer. Now, Jennifer is the one that's most interesting to me. Jennifer is in her 40s to 50s. This is Logan's mom and Sydney's friend. Now, in the past, I've talked about how Sydney's supposed to have some sort of friend character in this movie that I've heard about. So I'm wondering if this is who Jennifer is. Now, the rest of the characters, obviously, it sounds like these are people that Taylor will be close with at school or at least some type of friend group that they have going on here with maybe Logan not being in the mix because, again, he's described as the hot, creepy neighbor giving Ted Bundy vibes. What I could see playing out is maybe some sort of love triangle where Taylor and Brian obviously are known to be a thing, but there's some flirtation or interest that we can see Taylor expressing towards Logan even if it's not reciprocated I could see that being an angle that we get featured in Scream 7 as far as these other characters I mean the reactions to this are going to be polarizing in the sense that some people are going to be like oh we have another young group of characters my thing is this what did you think they were going to do did you think they were going to focus on all of the older cast they're not going to do that the reason why I don't see Spyglass doing that is because the producers in the midst of all of it seem to have made it pretty clear but people just love to ignore this for some reason or they just don't know they've made it clear what they want to do with scream they kind of have already made it clear they want to run this into the ground whereas in the past there was a time where during scream 4 i think kevin williamson not kevin williamson but wes craven himself i mean came out and even acknowledged some of the reasoning behind the gap from three to four bob weinstein had this idea of not just doing movies for the sake of doing them wanted to have some material to commentate on whereas it seems spyglass is not going to be interested in that that's why i've stated i see the commentary and that aspect of scream commenting on the trends of the horror genre i see that running stale and becoming a thing of the past the longer it continues to be around with the horror genre not really doing too much new these days it's it's in the same position it's been since scream has come back in my opinion <laughs> unless you want to commentate on some of the more overly gory movies like terrifier coming out right now but the other thing i might have i have some hope that they're going to try to commentate on is the true crime aspect scream has an opportunity to finally put a bigger spotlight on that in a way that has never been done before we've seen glimpses of it flirt we flirted with it in the past sequels but we've never put a big giant spotlight on true crime its effects on society its effects on certain people and how that might correlate to who our new ghost face is that is what i see scream 7 commentating on with a description like that to describe logan ted bundy like it seems like that might be a, a way to weasel in what the potential commentary could be we're going to commentate on true crime the negative impacts and what about this what if there's been some sort of trial in between six and seven where certain relatives of past victims maybe even recent victims have decided to go after the studio 
Go after those responsible for the stab films. Go after all of the things correlated to all the drama in Woodsboro and across the nation when it comes to Ghostface and the stab franchise. What if Sunrise Studios is is dealing with a lawsuit and something like that related to the fact that people want this franchise to be canceled in some capacity they want something to be done where no other no other families have to suffer because of the way the films are constantly reminding them that they had a relative who was a, a mad person they're constantly being blamed for it and they want to take it out on the studios for exploiting these tragedies maybe you have something like that going down and that ties into who the killer is in scream 7 i could see that playing out it's just that with a description like that for logan seems like that's the easiest thing to latch on right now that we're going to see a screen film finally hone in on true crime in a way that we've never seen before in a way that gives gail one of the most hopefully compelling narrative she's had since scream 4 but yeah those are my thoughts on all of this i'm not really too surprised that we're getting another young group of characters i can't really say why i would be surprised for that other people are disappointed in this it's just like again like i say a lot of people do not engage with these movies realistically. There's so much infatuation with just getting another one. It's gotten to the point where you have rose-colored goggles on and we're not engaging with reality. The reality is a screen film dedicated entirely to the older cast, I don't see ever happening if you have producers who are already communicating to us, they want to keep Scream alive as long as they can, basically milking it. So the way you would do that is to constantly try to figure out a way to get people enthused and interested in a younger group of characters so that way when that enthusiasm is able to stick you can rid yourself of the older characters and now you have a younger cast of people who can carry on the series for many decades to come versus the older cast who had their time to shine and they're not necessarily going to be the most attractive to everyone that wants to see scream All, of course like i stated ghostface is going to be the biggest selling point always but a young, hot cast is going to be the way to go. That's just how the things go in Hollywood. Let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you go ahead and subscribe. Turn on post notifications so that you never miss a video. In the description, I'll have links to all my social media accounts. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know if there are any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.